Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. I am Carolyn. Welcome to this week's weekly mini. I'm just going to get my things all sorted and set up here. We are so thrilled to have you. I am Carolyn, as I said, your host, and welcome to Weekly Minis, your bite-sized workshop on the hottest acro topics. You can reference all of our previous Weekly Minis and more amazing content on our Acrobatic Arts channel on YouTube. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments and we'll do our best to get Cheryl to answer those for you at the end of our presentation. If you know someone who should hear about today's topic, be a friend and click the share button on this post right now and let them know we're here. Today, we are pleased to bring you master teacher Cheryl Crawford for a bite-sized tutorial on the basics of Acro Studio setup. Cheryl started in dance at the age of five, and by 10, she was obsessed. She would go on to train at uh, the Theatre School of Dance and Drama in Edinburgh, where she studied RAD Ballet, ISTD Tap and Modern, Jazz, Contemporary Singing and Acting. She graduated with her RAD teacher status in 1999, and in 2001, she started her own studio. 22 years later, her studio, the Cheryl Crawford Dance Studios, offers ballet, tap, cheer, contemporary, and we all know her favorite, acrobatic arts. Cheryl is and has gone on to become an acrobatic arts course conductor and examiner, and we are thrilled to have uh, her contribution as part of our global team because we join her now in the studio in Glenrothes, Scotland. Cheryl, hello and welcome. Hello, thank you for having me. We are thrilled to have you. Cheryl, it is a big day in acrobatic arts because you are everywhere. It's like the Cheryl Crawford day. Uh, you're also um, on the podcast um, today talking about uh, your story as a studio owner um, who uh, brought on Acro, um, not right at the very beginning, but as part of your studio offerings. And um, so I, I think we're just, we're really excited because you do bring that studio owner perspective. Um, bringing a, a new genre into a studio and you probably faced many of the same um, fears and inhibitions I don't know if that's the right word that um, fence sitting that maybe some of our other teachers um, could could relate to would you agree yeah absolutely and I think it's quite fitting that these two things have gone live on the same day actually it's pretty good good timing <laughs> I, I yes, we were talking about it before we went live, and, and it, it it is a great time of year. I know we were talking in the UK. You get started just a little bit earlier in um, well, specifically in Scotland, maybe a little bit earlier in August, and in North America, we are facing uh, the start. Many studios are getting started in these next few weeks, so the timing is perfect. But it's always a great time to talk with you and to talk about acrobatic arts and how we can lower that bar or perceived bar for studio owners and teachers thinking about starting acrobatic arts in their studio. So uh, you can take it away. Okay, great. Thank you. Well, I just want to speak today about um, setting up Acro in your studio and what you may need to set up and the kind of costs involved. Um, because like myself, you might think that this can be quite expensive to get everything I need to start your Acro classes up, but it actually it needn't be. Um, so the because really you know the main thing the dancers need is you the educated dance teacher that's the main thing everything else is secondary to that so the main thing you do need apart from yourself is mats okay so i've got the mats behind me here that i have so i started out with the the fold panel mats here they're um my mats are uh, five panels that all fold up um, into this little stack here i started out with four of those okay i didn't know how many i would need i didn't know would the acro be popular in my studio or not it is popular um but four i thought i'll get that they cost me about 100 um british pounds so 100 pounds per panel mat um so four to start with and then after a few months the acro classes were quite busy i bought another couple then a few months later another couple so now i have about 12 of these fold out mats and i like them because i can do lots of different things with them they're easy to store first of all you know you can pop them in a cupboard i can stack them up for things that we need or i can lay them out i can join them together big rows little rows i can even join them all together and make one big space so um that is the the most important thing i think you need to spend your money on the mat at the back you can see is my rollout mat so i've only recently got these probably about two or three years ago 
Um, they're great, but they do take up an awful lot of room, okay? So they can't be stored in my cupboards. They've got to just sit at the side of the studio. So if you're renting um, halls out, they're not great, I think, for traveling, you know, that would take up an awful lot of space in your car if you can get them in at all. Um, I opted for what they call a wrestling mat. So it's got the, the vinyl surface, and that is because I can get my spray mop out at the end of the class and clean them. And you know, we've all got little ones, they drill on your mats, you know? And we've had, you know, cut fingers where there's blood and things, so I can easy clean them. The other ones you get are the carpeted ones and they're absolutely fine as well. The reason I bought the rollout mats was for the more advanced kids when they're starting to do, you know, connecting tumbling skills. They don't have the fear of the mats maybe separating, so it gives them a bit more confidence. And also, they're harder, so they're more like the stage, the hard floor, which I like. My little people do not like being on the rollout mats because they're too sore, apparently. So that is the main thing, is your mats. Um, you can see at the back, I've got a wedge here. That's not necessary at all, but it is a nice little tool. Um, I got that one from Amazon. Um, it was about £90 when I bought it, but I've just checked today and it's 144 now. Everything's going up. Um, I like that for doing things like your backwards rolls for your um, level threes. Um, that's a great thing, or your handstand to forward rolls, but you, you absolutely don't need a wedge. Things that you do need are your yoga blocks. Okay, I got mine from eBay. And again, I just started off with about I think I got six to start off with and I've just built these up my, my pile. Um, our local supermarket does every so often um, Aldi, they do your, the health week so they'll often have um, things like this in so I just grab a pile when I'm in. But I've often seen studios where they have their kids buy their own yoga block, they write their name on it and it just stays in the studio so you don't even have to bear the cost of that, you could have your kids buy them. As well as just the things we use the blocks for in the syllabus, I like these for um, doing bridge work. I like to pop yoga blocks between their knees so that they don't get their knees too wide. I think that's a great tool. Um, I, I also like to have them between their arms when I go back to things like kneel and half bridge. It keeps their sh uh, hand shoulder width apart. And then I have a basket full of big postage elastic bands. So these are great. Everything we do generally in acro, we have our hands shoulder width apart or our feet hip width apart or quite often we have our feet together. These help them feel the pull. If their hands get too wide, they can feel it. So I got a big uh, bag of these again from eBay. Just search postage elastic bands. This is, this is what you'll find. Scrunchies they have in their hair. Take their scrunchies out and use them on their arms or have them bring four head elastics and tie them together and you can make your own. We call these acro handcuffs. So again, they can feel if their hands are getting too wide. Uh, these are the props I like to use because it just gets good basic technique from the word go and actually they have fun. They actually love to use these. You know, we put them on their legs to do forward rolls so their legs don't open up. Um, when they're going down to bridge, we pop these on their arms so their arms don't get too wide and yeah, it's good fun. Other little things I use are these little beanie guys. Ikea. A basket of these in Ikea. They're up in the, the kids section where they have all the kids um, toys and, and room things. I think it was a pound, okay, so I just grabbed a few of these. But you know, I bet most of your kids have something like this lying about their house. Or I also got a bag of these little bean bags. I got these from Amazon. They're also on eBay. Just I typed in um, gym bean bags and this is what came up. I like to use these for putting underneath their chin when they're doing their forward rolls. You see they often roll on their head. You don't want them to roll on their head. So tuck their chin right down and they've got that nice rounded back. And again, they have great fun with these. Or a pair of socks all rolled up will do absolutely nicely under their chin. I also put it between their head and their knees when we're doing like a rock and roll to stay in nice and tight. Um, and you know, really that's all that's all I bought to start my acro program. So the mats, just start off with just a few. You don't need all your kids on the mat to begin with. And remember, if you're starting from scratch at the low levels and working their way up. You know, they're going to be doing things like um, gallops. You don't need to be galloping on the mat. You know, they can do that off the floor. 
they don't need to be on the mats for their planks and things so you can take turns about you know you're doing planks over there on the floor but you a lot on the mats you're going to do your bridge um, until you build up a, a big supply of mats enough to do all your kids um, and yeah that that's all i have this is simple as that and really acro is so popular you're going to get loads of kids in and then you're going to have enough funds to be able to to um top your supply up well that thank you cheryl uh, for that that's brilliant and i i love how you kept it simple because it just goes to show that your acro program grows as your acro program grows mm -hmm. and so do your students so their requirement for different um fancy or um, mats becomes relevant when they get to that place but that perceived barrier like i was saying and that I think you so eloquently lowered is that you start where they start. And as you can see from those mats, uh, you know, easy to clean, easy to stack, easy to store. Um, you also, uh, I, I'm just recapping for everybody. You spoke really, um, as we say, on a global level, because we all, we, sh we all basically have access to Amazon. Not everybody, I know, eBay, Ikea, but more than that, many of your students will already have these kinds of things at home it engages them it allows them to bring um, their own material or own equipment to class to support those efforts um, and so um, i thought that that was just great uh, because it also um, rolls back to the syllabus yeah so, absolutely and yeah. i do see lots of teachers you know and i've had lots of questions in the past about different equipment they think they might need but honestly if you're teaching your kids um how to do all the skills and working through their progressions they don't need any of the equipment they're going to they're going to manage to do it with their own bodies all by themselves truthfully with the progressions uh, our favorite word at acrobatic arts, but with proper progressions, knowing that the end game, starting with the end in mind, is that they will be performing someday in exams or on stage, uh, that they'll be performing um, with no mats. So the goal is the mats are there for their support and safety, of course, um, but um, keeping in mind that um, big crash pads and things like that are not um, not highly required if you have any questions for cheryl we do have uh someone who's been where you've been as if you missed the introduction at the beginning cheryl is a studio owner who didn't always have uh, acrobatic arts um, studio training um, and teacher training as part of her repertoire at her studio and so um bringing it on has brought um you know its own challenges but she shows that um it is um, very accessible for students and for teachers if you have any questions you can pop those in the comments um but otherwise uh just a really great resource for our teacher cheryl thank you so much um for that i don't think we have any questions so you must have covered it all and i think that you did so thank you cheryl so much for being here today you're most welcome my pleasure we will let you get on with your evening of teaching. Um, teachers, uh, if you uh, want to know more about acrobatic arts, if you're interested in our acrobatic arts module one teacher training uh, to expand your student population and enhance dancer results skills and potential, as you can see from Cheryl, it is very doable on a very low budget just to get started. And as she said, a great new resource for an income stream for your studio and obviously for uh, your the outcomes, as I said, results, skills, and potential of your students, visit acrobaticarts.com for upcoming online and in-person opportunities. When we log off today, I will put some links in uh, the comments for you to access. Thank you so much again, Cheryl. Thank you, teachers, for joining us for this weekly mini. Join us again next week. Bye.